Hey there viewers and welcome back to the South Main Auto Channel. Got us a 2004 Chevrolet. It's a Blazer. It's a 4.3 and it's not completely rotted out. Uh, which is amazing, but the engine light is on, of course, with uh, EVAP code. And I was like, ah, oh, this would be a piece of cake. It's your classic P0449, which is a vent solenoid control circuit, which 98% of the time you could load up to parts cannon, heave a vent solenoid at it, and you're good to go. However, uh, I'm doing my due diligence, I go check it, and I've got nothing back there. Uh, it's under the spare tire on these things, so let's spare tire down. We'll go back, I'll show you. Unplug the canister vent valve, and you know, just use the scan tool, turned it on, stuck my test light on there, and nothing. So we didn't have anything. Uh, long story short, as they say, I took my regular test light, this little guy right here, hooked it to a ground, probed it, and we have power. So, therefore, we are missing the control side back there. Now, we'll get up a little wire diagram here. We'll turn this into video to either how to condemn the PCM or how to find a broken wire because it's going to be one of the two. We either have a bad computer or we have a broken wire. And I'm more banking on a broken wire. And I will show you my process on that. So first of all, instead of raising the car back up, which we're going to have to anyways, uh, first of all, you need information. Now, this information is accessible to anyone. However, it is accessible to anyone willing to pay for it. So you can get yourself a three-day subscription to GM, uh, for example, for a few bucks. And you know, away you go, and uh, it's still less than you're going to have to pay some scumbag mechanic to diagnose your car for you. Here's the canister vent solenoid. Here's the fuse that runs it. Uh, fuse is hot at all times, so I go back there, and we have power on this wire, this orange wire. Now the canister, uh, the EVAP canister vent control is controlled by the ECM. You see the little switch in there when we tell it to turn on, it closes it and it goes to ground. And that's the white wire, and that is the wire that's not working. So you can see there, it's a pretty basic circuit. It has a power and ECM control. So power, ground, ECM turns it on. Easily, with test light, could identify, yes, we have power, and you know, B, we're missing that ground. So now, now what do you do? So you've identified the problem, you know, what's missing, now where do you go? I'll show you where I go. And guess what? You don't have a choice. You gotta go where I go because this is not some kind of fancy interactive TV where you click here and we'll go this way or you click here and we'll go that way. You wish. I wish. That'd be fun, wouldn't it? Anyhow, what I like to do is break the system down. I want to find out either A, this computer bad, or B, or do we have a broken wire? And I want to break it down as simple as possible. And to do that, that is to be done, I'm lacking the words today, is by finding the connector. And fortunately for us, we have this connector C104. Where are you at? Right there you are, C104. This is on the connector, pin A, and uh, circuit 1310. So you say, well, where in the thunder is C104? Well, right here on the second page, you fool. Here's what connector C104 looks like. And it's a uh, six way, it looks like. And uh, pin A, uh, also, here in service data says that it's cancer vent control it's white okay well where in the heck is it that's <laughs> right here you dig now it's on page three number one c104 c104 one series transmission for a two-wheel drive model but uh, it should be up there near the transmission how do we know that for sure because it's on page four you ding dong and according to data Engine harness to chassis harness left side of transmission near the park neutral position switch. So now we have armed ourselves with enough data to go down and easily split the system in half and say, and what and what are we looking for? Okay. Well, what we're looking for is what we're looking for. What we're looking for is to see do we at least have control to here? If we do, then we know the ECM is good and the wiring is good to here. So that narrows down our section from here to here. And that's only about two and a half inches or 12 feet on the truck of buried wire you can't see. So let's go find this connector. Hopefully we just find some green boogers right there. Well, first of all, I see it. And she's up there in good ways. There it is. I know you guys can't see because, well, basically I can hardly see. But first of all, I just want to do a little bit of visual. I see some blue tabs off stuff up here, like somebody's been meddling with the wires. Of course, it has new oxygen sensors in it because 
what car with a check engine light doesn't already have new oxygen sensors? <laughs> That's what you do. That wire comes down and around town and around in front of this little cross member here. Goes up and around town that way and into the main harness. Now, why do I suspect a broken wire? It's because this thing's had brake lines and fuel lines and a lot of fiddling with stuff. So what we're gonna do is see if I can't uh, get the blue lock out of this thing. Oh yeah, there it is. Get it unplugged. Give a little visual. So here's the end that runs to the back. And we got a white, green, gray, purple, black, white. White, green, gray, purple, black, white. Sounds like a song you could sing. Let me make sure that's correct. White, green, gray, purple, black, white. Okay, so I'm gonna get the, you guys can't see anything, can you? I'm gonna get the scan tool here. And first thing first, we're gonna go to special tests and then a PCM and then we're gonna control, this has an automatic, we're gonna control the uh, canister vent valve there. We're gonna use the old power probe. All right, and on the power probe, I think we've done a video on this before, we're gonna go to feed test, I think it is. Nope, not feed test. Never mind me. We're gonna go to driver test. We're gonna take our driver's test. Failed that my first time. Driver test right there. What's that gonna do? That puts 12 volt at the tip. Okay, and that's gonna be PCM safe and then we're gonna hook it to that circuit and then when the PCM grounds it, assuming it works, it's gonna do some kind of beeping action like that to let us know the driver's good. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. If not, check out my power probe video. So I'm going to canister vent solenoid. Now, technically when I come up here now and touch the white wire, which is going to be in the bottom left hand corner if we get this big jumbo thing up here without dropping our light and everything. Let me get this big jumbo up here. Okay, technically nothing should happen right now. Come on, you jumbo head. Okay, nothing is happening right now. But let me take the scan tool. I know you guys can't see them, so I'm giving you the commentary. I'm turning the vent solenoid on. Malfunction in EVAP system. Press enter to continue. Enter. Oh, don't you even start with me. Canister vent solenoid. I know I left the key on. Hopefully I did. Turn on. Malfunction, son of a freaking junk can tool. Uh, let me try to clear the code. You know what, it's not, it's not a junk scan tool. It's probably because if we look on our sheet here, part of that connector is also the uh, fuel tank pressure sensor, okay? And if it can't sense tank pressure, it probably doesn't want us playing with the vent valve. So what we're gonna have to do in this case we're going to have to plug her back up, but before we plug it up, let's back probe it. Let me get a prober. Some, sometimes cars are smart. So let's probe this. Okay. Then we'll come up and ring out, get it in the hole. Get in there, baby, yeah. There we go. Okay, we're probed. Now let me see if I can run the test. Let me go to EVAP system, canister vent solenoid. See if it's happy with us now. Oh look, it's happy now. Okay, now it's turned out and it should beep if we're good. So it's beeping, let me turn it off. Off, on, off, on, off. So what's that tell us, folks? Son of a whiskey. That tells us that our wire is broke. Well, it tells us a couple things. Let me move the camera so we can look at each other's faces. And there you are. And here I am. What's that tell us? Well, we've learned a couple things. We learned A, that without fuel tank pressure sensor input, GM gives you the middle finger on the test because it don't want you giving a full suck job on the tank and then it can't turn the test off and things happen. So that's why it does that. If it can't monitor tank pressure, it doesn't want you playing with its vent. Okay, makes sense. At least I assume that's the case. Secondly, we learned that the wiring 
let me get the pointing apparatus, our wiring is good from the ECM to this connector. And the ECM is good. So that's good. That's a good thing. You don't need to buy one of them fancy computer boxes. But the bad thing is, is the wires broke from here to the rear. And uh, there's a lot of wiring back there. So let's go do some visual looking. Let's see if we can get lucky today. So here's where we are in the rear. There's the canister vent valve. Here's my little test light back here. And yes, my test light works. I already checked that. Now if we turn the canister vent valve on, technically that should light up, but it duped. And uh, take my word for it, we got power back here. Um, I'm going to visually inspect this harness where it runs and loops around and maybe, maybe just lucky, we might find it. Um, it looks like the tape and stuff back here is original or it's been on there a long time. I, don't, I guess what I'm saying is I don't see where somebody's been meddling things they'll not be meddling in. Call me Charlie, baby, because I think we just got the golden ticket. Look at that. It's, I don't know what that is, but that wiring harness that runs down there has some abrasion, abrasive, abrasion marks in it. And I don't know, I didn't want to open this without you folks present because I see some marks there and I see it looks like somebody's under here chewing on this. I see some abrasion marks there. I see there, hopefully this is our right harness. So let's see, I should raise it up so it's a little harder to get to. Open this up. What do we got? We got green, baby! And it's not the right wire. Ooh, that one is. What color is this one? That one's brown. I got stuff on it. Nope. Nope. Oh, there's the white. There's my white. In three, two, one. Contact. Dun, 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 dun. Let's see. Let me get my strippers. <laughs> You only have to give these ones a dollar. Let's see. What do we look like under there? Okay. Get a little bit more of it out there. Come on, baby. Oh, it looks good. Let's see what this one looks like. Not good. Not good. Oh, that's getting better. Oh yeah, we're gonna need to add a little bit of something in between here, I'm thinking. Cause I don't think we're gonna have enough. Well, maybe, maybe. Let's just give it the old color. Are you guys zoomed in, enhanced? Are you round where you can see? She might reach with a, I'm up here on my tiptoes. I just wanna see what, uh, See if we got enough wire, we just put a heat shrink butt connector on here. Let's just give it the old college try first. I'm just glad we found it with a quick visual. Probably should have looked before we even went and did anything fancy, but it's always good to gather data and stick to your process. Because if you don't, what will happen is you start out on this big visual inspection and it doesn't lead to anything. And an hour and a half went by and you just done a bunch of digging and not that you'd be looking for an hour and a half but the other thing is too the other side of that coin is I gotta let this stinky car down I'm stretched out as I was saying a visual inspection should be just that you know you don't want to come back and be doing any fiddling because what happens what happens if you move something and now it works and now you don't know what you moved and you don't know if you had power here or power there you know, you don't know anything. You don't know nothing other than the fact it's not broke now. Well, come on, you silly goose. Get in the hole, baby. Get off my pliers. All right, let's uh, give that a little shrink and ink. Shrinky dink. Who remembers shrinky dinks? Do you remember that when you were a kid? I do. I think I had some shrinky dinks. Not a shrinky dink. Some shrinky dinks. I think they were those things that you... But what'd you do? You put all the little pieces together, then you think you heated them in the oven. And then they shrunk down into little plastic things. 
And when I was a kid, we had stuff like that you could play with, like things, you know, like a wood murder with like a two-foot cord on it so you can make sure you're playing next to the drapes <laughs> with a red-hot iron. If you're making your mama something special. Light brights. Huge bake ovens. Yep. Cook all kinds of stuff in there. I didn't have one. My sister did. I remember that thing. Yes, sir. Okay, she's all shrunk down. Very nice. Let's go back to the back and see if it works. Now let's see if perhaps we've got a double, double lock. Let's see if the canister vent belt itself is any good. We'll just plug it in. Well, it was a heck of a lot easier to unplug than it is to plug in. I'll tell you that much. We got the classic feature on here on the back. I have to line it up with one hand and then use my thumb. There we go. It is up and in. Okay, everybody be quiet. All right. Okie dokie. Well, that's good. So the solenoid at least clicks. It doesn't mean it works. Here's our broken wire. It's right there. Can you see? I'm over here. That's where the broken wire was. I'm going to take and get that harness taped up. And then probably just zip tie her up out of the way. I don't know what shelter to hang up. But we'll get it taken care of the best that we can. Somebody was playing. Always looks like a setup, I think, when we uh, go on the broken wire hunt and then we found one, found it. And trust me, folks, if I knew where this was at prior to doing the video. I wouldn't have done the video. I would have just fixed the dang wire. I was hoping to use this as a learning opportunity for everyone. Just using logical deduction. You know, what are we going to do? We've identified the problem. We know what it is. We know for a fact it's a broken wire. Or we narrow down very quickly by one test to say it's one of two things. It's, you know, that main brain box, as the folks like to call them, is junk or it's broken wire. And then very quickly after that, finding our connector, we're able to eliminate that big fancy computer under the hood. We knew it was good. And then at that point, we knew it could only be a broken wire. 100%, no questions asked. We're not looking for anything else other than broken wire. So that's what I was hoping to teach y'all, as they say, down south, teach y'all about was how can we logically find the broken wire with the easiest thing. So let's take this here, for example, like if we didn't come back here and have it glaring us right in, its, in our faces with its little beady eyes and green pus, if we didn't, then, then what do we do? Well, in that case, we want to break the system in half again from where we were, right? So what's the easiest way to do that? Well, easiest way is to find another connector. However, not an option. There isn't another connector on this one. So what you would do is find the easiest section of harness to get into. And you would have to open it up and do the hokey pokey. And turn yourself about. And by that I mean you'd have to open up the harness and actually poke the wire. And of course repair it properly when you're done. When you're done, so you poke the wire and say, do I have what I'm missing here? And if that answer is no, then you know you move further towards the last place in which you had what you were looking for. Does that make sense? I'm hoping that it does. I'm gonna get a zip tie. We're gonna zip tie that thing right to the hose here. It feels like, what's it feel like? Oh, it feels good. It feels like we got some retainers up there. Oh, you know what? What's this right here? Oh, that's a wire retainer. Okay, they got a zip tie on that. 
Yeah, that's a zip tie for sure. Ooh, oh, you hear me that? Just tighten her up a little. And then you just keep calm and carry on. And you keep breaking it in half until you end up at your epicenter of where the problem began. Okay, zip tie time. Oh, gosh, I'm stuck. Ah, it's tight. Now the hard part. Put the spare back in. I can't believe the spare came out. That's kind of like a miracle. I like to have little baby celebrations whenever spare tires come out. Because that rarely slash never happens. And then we got a temporary transport plate on here. So we can't dry it because that expired like last year. I don't want to get caught. You pull them about the popos. All right, what did I use to take it out? Just a regular flathead bit. Seemed to fit in there well. Cancer vent valve is open, perch solenoid is turned off. What we're going to do is we're going to start pulling a little vacuum on here. Oh, yeah, and nothing seems to be happening, folks. Why don't we have anything that's working here? Our data seems to be irregular, wrong. Erroneous. Incorrect Amundo. I heard the uh, idol came down there. Let's try this again. Virgin seal. We want some select data. And let's make sure our data is live. We're going to pick that vent, pressure, purge. Our data is live. There's something, something wrong here, folks. Fuel tank pressure sensors giving us a big middle finger. That thing ain't working at all. Duty cycle should have went back to zero. There's something, something wrong happening. Maybe we got more broken wires than what we initially saw. So let's just go to canister purge and have a look at some stuff here. Oh, my hose fell off. What are you choking out? Ah! Ah! All right, I got that hooked up. Sort this out. Purge, vent, pressure, continue. It's odd our tank pressure hasn't changed at all. Ah, see, now we're cooking with fire. So we've got our canister purge open all the way. Now technically when we close that again, we should go back to atmospheric pressure because we're still venting. You know, we still got the back door open. So let's drop that back down to zero. And bada bing, bada boom. Fuel tank pressure sensor works. Wiring back there, good. Canister vent valve is not stuck shut. Canister purge solenoid works because we're pulling vacuum. But again, it can only pull so much. Oops, wrong button. We can only pull so much because, you know, the vent is open. Now, my anticipation was is to close the vent, turn on the purge, and make it hold the vacuum. However, I think our scan tool is not working as it should. We increase our purge the vent should automatically close but instead it does something really awful to the engine and makes it almost stop that's not good 
Another quick and dirty check. I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you something. That's something Meemaw taught me. We're gonna go quick and dirty on this. You're gonna like this. Maybe you won't. Maybe you're not into this kind of stuff. Where are we at here, folks? Purge, vents, jeez. Continue. Let's turn our vent off. Or, so it's not venting, I guess is what I'm getting at. We're not venting, we're not purging, but what we are doing is we're returning hot fuel back to the tank. We might have to shut the vehicle off. I would anticipate a build in fuel tank pressure unless it was missing a gas cap or had a gross leak. But looky, looky what I see. So right now we have no purge going on. We've got the back door shut, so to speak. We closed the canister vent valve. We're putting hot gas back into the tank because it's a return type fuel system. And in theory, when that happens, that fuel tank should start to expand because typically it would push, you know, the expansion gases, hydrocarbons back into the canister. So what's this tell us? Well, this tells us A, our vent works. It tells us B, we don't have a very small evap leak. Now let's open it and it'll go back to atmospheric pressure. What? Okay, so I can now feel good when I say to myself, Eric, this thing probably has no evap problem. It appears to be functioning. We appear to not have any small leaks. And the vent valve works, the purge works, the bidirectional test on the tool does not work. But other than that, I feel pretty good. I feel real good about this. And of course, you know, this fuel tank pressure sensor code, that's because we had the little shebang unplugged with, uh, you know, the key on there. So we'll clear them out. Now we just need to get some license plates or a dealer plate or something so we can rip this baby around and uh, run the drive cycle so she can get it inspected after she has some other things fixed. Well, there you have it, folks. Uh, that was quick and easy. Hopefully you learned something. Maybe you already knew this. Maybe it's just, you know, logical deduction, like I say, and it doesn't matter if we're working on that canister vent valve or if we were working on any wire in the entire car we use the same reasoning, you know, where does it begin? Where does it end? Do I have it here? Do I not have it here? And, you know, kind of take it from there. There are some circuit designs that could, you know, trick you, uh, but, you know, basically we're looking for, you know, with any wire fault is uh, opens, shorts, or high resistance that covers them all. You know, that's short to ground, short to power, short to another circuit. Um, you know, high resistance, corrosion, you know, something like that, uh, or open, just, just nothing. So, I guess that's all I can tell you. That's all I got to say. Why don't you tell me what you got to say down there in that comment box. Wait for the ding dong. After that, subscribe. Ring that bell. Not that bell. That means you're here. And just remember viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.